Tonight at work, I had an idea for a series. And I'm going to try to do, try my absolute best to do it. Primarily because, to be honest, this is an inconvenience to me. Inconvenience means sacrifice. What I have here, printed out an email from my pastor. He gave these to me a couple weeks ago. And you know what? I have not been as faithful as I should have been. Start going through them. This is six pages, 48 scriptures on healing. Actually, you know, I'm not going to have his or my email on there, but it's called Healing Scriptures. There are 48 of them. I don't know if I'm going to stretch this out over 48 days, or if I'm going to do a couple a day. I'm going to see how these videos go, okay? Now, ideally, the way he does this, he goes through these every day. Uh, I believe I need to get an updated list from him. I think he's up to 50 now. <laughs> so, or I might just go dig it on my own. One second, please. I don't think the devil wants me to do this. You know why? I started getting back pain. I haven't had back pain in a while. So I had to uh, stretch my back real quick. Let's start with healing scripture number one and the thought that goes with it. The word of God will save your life. Now, I could get fancy, and I may, and I'll put the, these, I'll write these scriptures on the uh, screen. I probably won't do the whole scripture, but I will do at least uh, the, you know, what book, what book, uh, chapter, and verse it is. Proverbs 4, 20 through 24 says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Excuse me. Do not let them depart from your sight, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all your flesh. Now, that I believe is in the New King James Version. This is the one I read. Um, this has a lot of different footnotes. Uh, this is, it says, commentary by a guy by, by the name of Ray Comfort. I don't really know who he is. I looked him up. He is a, a scripture. He is a, he, he studies the scripture. That's his thing. And I don't see any footnotes on these particular ones. But also, now that was number four, chapter four, 20 through 24. I'm also going to add 20, I'm also going to put, uh, wow, my brain. You know, he only wrote up to 22 on here. So I'm actually going to finish out all the way up to 27. So, we read through 22, which is, you know, for they are the life of those who find them and the health to all their flesh. Now, 23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of its spring is the, for, uh, for out of its spring the issues of life. Put away from you deceitful mouth and perverse lips far from you. That is saying, you know, you know, you already know I try my best not to swear on my channel. Sometimes it happens. If it happens here and there, it's not that big of a deal. Just pray about it. But there are some people who's, who all they, you know, their whole vocabulary is nothing but swearing. And this also goes as far as, you know, back. Or, uh, you know, start in trouble, you know, start in fights with words, you know, talking bad about people, that kind of thing. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. 
remove your foot from evil. Now there is commentary on 25, which is uh, the one that says, let your eyes look straight ahead, let your eyelids look right before you. On here it says, live for souls. Now concerning the salvation of our fellow man, we shall never comp uh, compass it unless our eyes look right right on and our eyelids straight before us. Before we win souls, we must live for souls. We need men and women uh, men and women who live to convert others to Christ. The minister had better quit his pulpit. If it be not his one burden desire to bring salt to bring hearts to Jesus' feet. If a divine impulse be not upon him driving him to seek the souls of men, let him go elsewhere with his windy periods. Professors have little right uh, little right to be in Christ's church unless they are passionately in earnest to increase his kingdom by the salvation of their fe fellow men. Oh, my brothers and sisters, on whom... Oh, by the way, this is by Charles Spurgeon. I didn't realize that. I, just, I was reading ahead a little bit. Oh, my brothers and sisters, on whom is the blood mark of redemption, I charge you concerning this matter to let your eyes look right on and your eyelids look right before you seek souls as dogs hunt their game eye nostril and ear all open ever and every muscle strained converts are not gained by dreamers we cannot imitate jesus as a savior of men by being dull and heartless in any point in which we follow our Lord, let us do it with our soul. Charles Spurgeon. And these are these are um, scriptures that I personally want to try to follow every day. I want to... I'm actually going to go ahead and do one more. I'm not trying to rush through these. That's not my goal. My goal is to give you guys scriptures that you can live every day to help you in your healing. Number two, God's word will not fail. This is Joshua 21, 45. Not a word failed of any good thing in the Lord had spoken. It all came to pass. Now let's see if there is commentary on Joshua twenty-one forty-five. It would probably help if I actually knew where to find Joshua in here. I gotta be honest with you. I have not been reading the word every day the way I should. And this little series that I'm doing is actually me trying to get myself into the word every day and it is something that I know for a fact that I need to do every day 281 So we need we are looking for Joshua twenty one and looking for forty five. There is okay, here we actually have something. And the little subtext above it, I don't know if you can read that, says the promise fulfilled. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read 43 through 45 because that is where where it, uh, <clears throat> where it really it says here 
the commentary here at the bottom is, is 21-43-45. It says, We can trust God to keep every promise he makes. It is impossible for him to lie. It also tells us to see Titus 1-2, which we will actually go ahead and do. Start at 43 in Joshua 21. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give, and to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. <laughs> Excuse me. And not a man of their enemies, or of all their enemies, stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word failed of any good thing that the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All had came to pass. Now, I do know where Titus is. <laughs> That's actually one that I had read a few times on my own. Okay. <laughs> it's actually... There's only like two pages of it and I just went past it. So we are looking for Titus. Crap. <laughs> 1745. And we had just read Joshua 2145, and I already forget what said it asked. It said Titus. I swear, as this goes on, I will get better. As for one, I will do. I will do more work ahead of time. We're to see Titus 1, 2. And it says, In hope of all eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. <laughs> Maybe we should read all right so Titus 1 1 Paul a bond servant of God an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life which God who cannot lie promised before time began but has in due time manifested his word through preaching which was committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior see the thing is and this is one thing that my pastor has been preaching on a lot lately it is through faith that we are healed. I want to see if he has it in here. Well, I know he has it in here. Oh, man. We're going to get into some good stuff soon. Oh, I can't wait till we get to 18. I could I could read it now. Uh, some of this stuff I'm going to go ahead and do together. But one of the things that he's been preaching on is it's through their faith. You know, hold hold on one second. Okay, so there's actually two scriptures that parallel with this. And I will show, or, by the way, Bible Hub, uh, okay, Bible Hub, 
is a wonderful thing. <laughs> I just typed in the, the part of it I could remember. In Luke 5.20. And I actually want to go ahead and try to do... By, or 7.48 as well. But first off, let's start with Mark 2.5. And this is when uh, Yeshua <laughs> had paralytic son. And uh, hold on, let me try to... Let me get some uh, context here. And I also want to see if he has it written down here. I really apologize, but right now I'm getting excited. Um, I, I honestly can't wait to go through these with you. And I'm actually going to, you know what, I'm actually going to jump ahead to 41 here. Actually, in a little bit, I will jump ahead to that. Remind me, I need to jump ahead to 41. Alright. But it says, when I typed in to Google, let me just try, by faith, they were healed. Okay, so, all right. Shoot, 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 shoot. Mark two five. So, Jesus heals the paralytic born of four. And in Mark two five it says, when Jesus saw their faith. He said unto the paralytic, Son, your sins are your sins be forgiven you. And Okay. I'm gonna need more time on this one. Let's go to Luke five twenty. It says when he saw her his faith, he said unto them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And these are all tied in with uh, healing, Luke's. But, alright. I'm jumping ahead here. Please forgive me for this. And let me... So, number 41, I said that I'm going to jump ahead to that one. And I will cover it again. But I'm going to do that by telling you what I have. Number 41 says, give testimony of your healing. And that is Revelations 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, I have a song stuck in my head, and rather than getting a copyright strike, I'm going to put a link in the description to this song, because I know it's on YouTube, so there's no point in me doing it again if it's already on YouTube. Alright, so, yeah, these are definitely ones that you're supposed to read every day. This could take hours a day to do, which is why I'm doing this in small small blips on here. So here's some healing that has happened in my life. Back in 2005, I started giving my life back to God. I had, I had, uh, backslidden. Well, actually, up at the point of 2005, I had been a Christian my entire life, and let me find a calculator, because I don't remember how old I was. 
the 2005. <laughs> I was 21 years old. Actually, yes, I turned 21 at a Friday night youth meeting at Victory Assembly of God. I did not turn 21 in a bar. I had, at that point, I had given my life to Christ for several months now. I used to have acid reflux so bad, oh, where tell is right here, that I would... I was taking a near-lethal dose of Prilosec, and I was still awake at night with stomach pain and acid reflux. Not long after I gave my life to Christ, I started noticing, Whoa, I wasn't sick all night. And then I noticed I could go days at a time without taking the Prilosec, and wait a minute, I don't need the Prilosec. My acid reflux was cured. Um, try to think. Try to think of what, what has happened in my life up to then. Now, another thing that I had noticed was... Well, actually, this is what this one is actually this week. Um, I was start starting to get remember, or uh, I mentioned before on my other channel that I had a dental abscess that my face had swollen up to the point where I couldn't even really wear my glasses. I had noticed that it had started to come back some, and I was talking to my pastor Sunday. I said to him, I said, it's weird because it did not grow as fast as it did last time. And then he prayed with me. And when I woke up Monday morning, because I could feel it, like, you know, it was there, but there wasn't the pressure, there wasn't the pain. I could just feel that the lump was there. He prayed with me as we were leaving. I woke up Monday morning. And it's all gone. And one of the other things that he talks about is declaring that you are healed. For the last, I'm going to say five years. I could be wrong. could be five years, give or take. I have been declaring that this knee here is bone on bone. As of tonight, I'm declaring that I'm healed. And I'm going to give you a word for that. Because I will never, I will do my best to never say anything during these videos that I do not have scripture for. Uh, give me one second to find it because I just saw it. Number 21, after you say it, believe it, and you will receive it. But first, I have to go back to 20, which says, what you say will, and he has that in capital letters, make a difference. Mark 11, 22 to 23, have faith in God, for assuredly I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and does it, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And I can tell you right now, the devil is mad I'm talking about this. Give me a second. Because he's trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to trip me up and 21 says after you say it believe it and you will receive it mark 11 24 now we just quoted 11 22 to 23 therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray 
believe them or believe that you receive them and you will have them. And I am just looking at some of this stuff and I am getting excited. Because I believe that we uh, we have something here that is going to work. I believe that these videos will help somebody. And if nothing else, they are going to help me get back into this word. Get the heal that I deserve. Well, actually, I don't, if I get the heal that I deserve, I'll be dead. But get the heal that God says that I will have. And I, I believe in that. Now, these things that we are talking about, and I probably should have put this in the beginning of the video because half of you probably tuned out by now. But these things that we are talking about, we can, uh, they will not only work with healing your body, they will work with healing your relationships, your family. They can help with your finances. Healing does not necessarily mean physical healing. But also emotional healing. It's like, you know, are you, or have you been claiming your whole life that you have a disability, like a mental disability? If you study God's word, study what God has for you, realize that 2,000 years ago he took the beating and the stripes for your healing. That he meant it. And that you will receive the healing. If you do what God tells you to do. And uh. I don't know about you. But right now I am blessed. I don't know how I'm supposed to get to sleep. And I have to go to work an hour early tomorrow. I just got home from work. And uh. It's. According to that over there it's 940. Luckily I don't have to be until 11pm. But I still haven't eaten yet. That is what I'm talking about. That this is going to be a be an inconvenience for me. Which an inconvenience will be a blessing. Now tomorrow, we're going to start at number three. Which I could read right now. But we'll talk a little bit more about it in depth. I will do a little more studying on it. And I still have the... Facebook Messenger up on this. I'm really sorry about that. But number three says God's will, healing, is working for you. Which is for God, which is Philippians 2.13. For God, for it is God's, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Which, and basically you could say, is that it is God's will for you to be healed. I'm going to do a little more studying on this between tonight and tomorrow night. And we are going to have... We're, we're going to have church. <laughs> I, I really hope that I get better with this as I go on. For one, I want to get better in God's word. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.